So how do you find um, derivatives when you don't have a regular function to take the derivative of? Um, so what we're going to do is, here's an example. It's, it's from the tr trigonometric functions and chain rule section. And so what they want us to do is evaluate uh, some, some function h of x and h prime actually want us to find h, h prime of two for that function when we've got this situation where the function is defined by some function f divided by g. Well, what we're seeing here is a, is a quotient, and the way we define derivatives of quotients is use the quotient rule. So we're gonna do low d high, so g of x times the derivative of the top, which is the derivative of the high, right, d high. So f prime of x, minus the top, which is f of x, times the derivative of the bottom, which is g prime of x, all over the denominator squared. So then we want to evaluate this at x equals 2. So we're looking for g of 2 times f prime of 2. minus f of 2 times g prime of 2 all over g of 2 squared. And now what we need to do is refer to our table that they provided us over here. And we're talking about the row where x equals 2. So g of 2, they're telling us is 5. f prime of 2, they're telling us is 7. And f of 2 is 3. And g prime of 2 is 9. And that's all over g of 2 squared. So g of 2 is 5. So square it, we get 25. So what are we going to get? We're going to get 35 minus 27, I believe, is, let's see, 3 is at 8. So 8 over 25 will be the derivative of... Uh, h evaluated at x equals 2. Okay, so then, let's see, let me clear it, and we'll try that second one. Now we've got h is defined by this composite function, and what I'm seeing is two composite functions. I'm seeing g is the outside. I'm seeing something being squared as the inside. I'm going to rewrite that just so it makes more sense to me. See, it's something being squared right there, and then the, the third inside function is f. So this requires the chain rule, and we're going to have to apply, let's see, we're going to have to apply the, uh, just really, it's just the power rule. You know, we can do g prime is the outside function, so the derivative of the outside, and we'll leave the inside alone times the derivative of the inside. Now, the first inside function is the square. So I'm going to bring the 2 down in front, just apply the power rule, 2 times the derivative of that first inside, which is uh, just f of x. And now I'm going to do the derivative of the chain, apply the chain rule one last time, which is this f prime of x. So that's the derivative of that mess. And what we've got going on here is a bunch of products. And we're asked to add 2 again. So let's replace all my x's with 2's. Times 2 times f of 2 times f prime of 2. So now let's start doing some evaluation. Let's see. I'm going to say f prime of 2 was 7 f of 2 was 3, but it's getting multiplied by 2, so that's 6. And then for this one, f of 2 was 3. Then we're going to square that. So then what we're looking at is g prime of 9. And g prime of 9 is 17. So to get that answer, we have to multiply six, uh, 17 times 6 times 7. Okay, so we're there we're, we're finding the derivative based on other values. We, what we could do even now, I mean, because that's where this is going, 
is um, we could come up here. Let me clear all my drawing. We could even replace some of this. What if what if uh, what if they asked me to find? I don't know how this. Is, I'm just making this up on the fly. Let's let's see how this works. What if I said? Uh, uh, let's see. How about e to the two x over g of x? That's it, and that's what h of x is defined by. How do we find the derivative uh, of this? Well, it's a quotient, so the bottom function times the derivative of the top, and what you've got to remember is uh, um, the derivative of e to the 2x is it's going to be e to the 2x, and then we're going to apply the chain rule to find the derivative of the exponent times 2. I'm going to write that out in front. So that's the bottom times the derivative of the top, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. And if I wanted to evaluate this at x equals 2, I mean, we're probably going to get a weird answer, but that's okay. So 2 times g of 2 times e. Now remember, I'm replacing x with 2, so 2 times 2 is 4. Minus, so again, e to the fourth times uh, g of two, let's see, g prime of two, I'm going to write, uh, let's see, g prime of two, all over g of two squared. So then to evaluate this, let's see, g of two is five, so two times, two times five is ten, so that'll be ten times e to the fourth minus g prime of 2 was 9, so, so 9 times e to the fourth all over, let's see, g of 2 was 5, we're going to square it, we're going to get 25. Oh, this is interesting. This actually worked out a lot better than I thought it was going to. 10 e to the fourth minus 9 e to the fourth are like terms, so that's just, we're going to subtract them. I'm going to get e to the fourth over 25. So hopefully that'll help you do some more questions with these, and we can certainly come up with some more if you need some practice. Uh, they're going to ask you something like this on the AP test. I'm sure of it. Okay. Plus, you're going to see something like this on the on the uh, on the on the DBA questions. So hopefully that helps you solve those questions. If not, give me a yell.